once again, thank you for attending our webinar. Um, I will walk you through um, the webinar regarding the Elliott Wave principle. One day, one topic, uh, day on Epic Street. So thank you, Epic Street, for inviting me to this uh, special day of webinars. So uh, before we start, uh, let me just tell you that I'm uh, in Forex market for uh, a little bit more than 10 years now. And um, firstly, at the start, I was just trading um, just FX market. And actually, I'm now also investing on in futures and stocks. And um, I'm, I'm the owner of EliotWaveForecast.com website. And uh, basically, my trading approach is uh, also analytically oriented. So uh, I'm a lot of using Elliott Wave principle in which uh, we will go in a second. So actually what we'll cover today. Now, if you will have any questions, just please type, type them in and I will try to answer as soon as possible. Of course, if I will know the answer. So what we will cover, we will cover um, very quickly impulse waves rules and guidelines, corrections rules and guidelines, because I have noticed that some traders have uh, were difficult to figure out if the market is maybe trading in a wave free uh, of very strong impulsive wave or it's just a wave C of a temporary uh, reversal. So we will cover this part, um, especially we'll highlight guidelines. Then we will cover uh, the confirming price action uh, and why this is very good uh, to wait on a confirming price section before pulling a trigger. And I will show you some past trading examples from April of this year. And at the end, uh, I will cover some live analysis, of course, if you have time. So let's get started. Now, uh, impulse. Now, this is uh, the wave where the money is. Okay, these are very strong moves. Uh, very sharp waves and typically with no overlaps. Okay, so you always in a trend you will have corrections, but the important is when you identify impulse wave that uh, those corrections will not be overlapped. Okay, so it's a five wave pattern. This is wave one here shown on the chart. Then you have a wave two pullback. Now this wave two pullback will typically increase. Uh, for 50 and six or 61.8 percent compared to wave one, but definitely it must not replace more than 100 percent of wave one. Then you have a wave three, typically very strong move. It, it must be clearly in five waves, okay? And here this wave four and wave two must not overlap. Here this overlap in wave one is allowed, especially if you're tracking diagonal pattern, okay? Leading diagonal. Then you have a wave four pullback which can be very similar to wave two, okay? But only in wave four, you can have a triangle while in wave two, this is not allowed. Then you have a wave five, final push to the upside in this five wave model. And it's also a five wave pattern, which means that wave five is also structured by five waves. And uh, this can be a motive wave, can be all impulsive wave, can be ending diagonal, okay? So, uh, overlaps here are allowed. So actually, if you are uh, want want to catch a trade, now the best uh, money will come from this uh, third leg. Okay, because typically you will make money here very fast, very quickly. Okay, um, because typically this wave three is the strongest, and um, you can see that wave four must not trade into the territory of a wave one, which means this wave four must not move into this territory. Otherwise, your wave count will become invalid. In that case, you will know that this is not impulsive, impulsive wave, that your wave count was wrong and that you need to adjust something, okay? And wave three, more importantly, must never be the shortest wave, but only the shortest wave when you compare to wave one or wave five, okay, at the same time, which means it can be shorter than wave one, but only if it's not shorter than wave five. Okay, so I hope this makes clear because um, I'm getting some emails that wave three is not the longest, but uh, because wave one is maybe the longest, but that's fine if um, if if wave three is still longer than wave five. 
okay so um, this is impulse and uh, now this is correction uh, we we know zigzag flat triangles double freeze triple freeze which are complex corrections but today i will focus only on zigzag and uh, we know that this is a free wave pattern which typically moves against the larger trend so here we have um, abc to the downside which means that this uh, such structure should occur in the uh, middle of a larger uptrend okay so it's a uh, structure is a 535 five, which means this wave a should unfold in five waves okay wave one two three four five then you have a free wave retracement for a wave b which is corrective flat, and then you have um three legs uh, five waves down for a wave c okay uh, now primary appears in wave two or wave four of an impulse wave b as shown here and also in wave x okay now um, why i decided that i will present just a correction of uh, just a zigzag and will not go uh, through the flat and triangles and so on because i noticed that traders as i said earlier have difficulty to figure out if the market is maybe trading just in wave c or is this maybe wave three so uh, we actually can take advantage of some guidelines which will help us to identify um, this uh, the correct wave count okay is it wave c is was this only a temporary replacement within larger uptrend or is this market changing the direction from bullish to bearish mode okay so firstly let's focus here on this, this uh, left picture okay just a second uh, okay so um here we have actually five waves down for wave a which can also be wave one okay then you have three waves up for a wave b which can also be wave two and then you have five waves of decline and when this market is starting to fall in here then obviously you don't know um if this market is in a wave c or in a wave three but let's assume that you are on the bullish side of the market and you want to pull a trigger on the long side so in that case you at least i'm trading like this i will firstly wait on a bottom to four so if i'm tracking an abc replacement then i want that this wave c will bottom somewhere around this lower trend line which is parallel trend line compared to the upper trend line. Okay, so I actually connect the high wave B swing high and then put a parallel trend line at the bottom of this wave A. And at this um, point here, I want definitely to see a bounce or maybe from even higher levels. Okay, but definitely I do not want to see any decisive break to the downside. Now, uh, at this stage, at this price here um, where, where I'm looking for a reversal zone, I definitely will not uh, go into the market. I will wait on a confirming price action. In other words, I will wait that that market will reverse from the levels that I identified. Okay, I want to see if I am on the right track with the market. So in that case, I will wait on an impulsive bounce and only impulsive bounce will confirm the fact that this market completed a free wave decline and an ABC or a zigzag, which uh, was actually part of my trading plan if I said earlier that I'm on the bullish side of the market. Okay, so if I see a five wave rise, more importantly, back towards this upper trend line, then I will be looking for a longs and will put my stops below wave C. Okay, and I will not chase the market this wave C here because this wave, this price can always accelerate to the downside. Okay, if we take a look on this example on the right, we have an impulsive price action. Okay, so let's assume that this, we said that this could be wave A and this could be wave B. Okay, and then uh, you would expect a wave C, but the price did not bounce to the upside. In fact, the price accelerated to the downside through this lower trend line that I also mentioned here on this left side. Okay, so if you see this acceleration price action out of this trading channel, then this is uh, this usually leads to increase in volume. 
which means that volume in this way free is much um, higher and momentum much uh, stronger compared to the volume in wave one. And as we said earlier, typically wave three will tend to be the strongest wave in a five wave model. Okay. While in a wave C, it's something completely different. In wave C, you want to see a sl lower, slower price action compared to wave A. So there will be plenty of examples in the markets if you put a very close eye on the corrections that first lag. Okay, wave A is typically very strong. Then you have a pullback for a wave B and then very slow move to the downside for wave C. And this is where volume gets slower, okay? And which usually leads to a bullish reversal um, after a completed correction, okay? And as I said, in a wave three, it's something different. You will see accelerating price action. So if you want to identify, uh, the right uh, outlook, uh, then I suggest you to wait uh, on a confirming price action. In that case, you wait on a wave C bottom to form. And only when you see that correction is completed, you can be confident and pull a trigger and you will exactly know where to put the stop loss. Okay. Because also, if you're identifying wave C that will bottom here, wave C can also be extended wave. Okay, and your stops can be triggered and then market will reverse. So it's very, very important that we wait on a confirming price section. Okay, because actually, if you identify resistance as a price level, uh, actually resistance, it's not resistance if the market did not reverse for me. Support is not support if you don't see a bounce. Okay, so wait on what you want to see before pulling the trigger, okay? Um, or here in a way free, if you, for example, want to identify a reversal to the upside, but you see that market is accelerating lower into a way free, then you can still spot a trading opportunity. Then obviously you will have to adjust the wave counts and will maybe focus on this upcoming wave four that is part of a new bearish trend, okay? Uh, so there are definitely a lot of opportunities in the market. So uh, do you have any questions, traders? Mm -hmm. Yes, wave A uh, can also be in free legs. This is allowed. But in that case, if this would be a free, uh, a free, wave structure here uh, down for a wave A and then three waves move to the upside for a wave B and then five waves down for a wave C, then uh, this will be, would be called a flat correction, okay? More importantly, it's still a correction, okay? So it just, uh, it, it would not be a zigzag, it would be a flat correction uh, if you have a three waves down for wave A. If you maybe will see you would thought that this is a free wave for, uh, fall for a wave C, then this is probably not a wave C. It's most likely a complex correction above zigzag. Okay, so we will not go uh, deep into this. We will I just um, present it, the zigzag here, the most basic structure and clear pattern, okay? So, um, Okay, so let's go to our next slide. Um, actually, here is example of a correction and impulse um, in the real market that I shared with our uh, subscribers. Uh, I think it was in last month. So here on the left, I have example of uh, on dollar Swiss and the ABC rally. It's a zigzag to the upside. Uh, now notice that this was with A wave B and then you, wave, you have wave C. Now, earlier I said that in wave C, you will typically see a slower price action compared to wave A, which was definitely the case here in these final stages. Okay, if you can see here, we have an overlap in price action. Okay, so definitely price action at this stage was not very strong, was not very bullish. Okay, so um, also an ABC move was contained by these parallel trend lines. 
we haven't seen any decisive break to the upside from this upper trend line. So I waited uh, and I was hoping on a bearish reversal. And when this trend line gave way, I knew that this was a correction. Okay, so at this breakout point, I knew that this was a corrective rally. You cannot count anymore this as a wave one, wave two, uh, wave three, four, and five, okay, to the upside, because impulsive wave count is invalid. Okay, so at this breakout point, I was confident that this whole recovery should be replaced. And a few days later, we have seen a new low. Here, um, on the four hour chart of crude oil on the right, we have an example of a bearish impulse. Uh, let's assume that here we wanted to identify wave A, wave B, and wave C, and then we would maybe look for longs, okay? But notice that market did not move anywhere near towards this upper trend line, okay? Where breakout, only breakout would confirm a completed free wave decline. In fact, the market accelerated to the downside. More importantly, I remember this very well, price closed on a daily basis, around these levels, okay, well beneath this channel, okay? So this breakout was very important signal for this bearish impulsive price action in progress. Because we have seen a very strong move to the downside, market closed um, at the end of the day at the lowest levels, okay? Remember, daily close price is the most important price of the day, okay? It's not important if you see a very bullish reaction um, during the, uh, the European session, and then this whole bullish move is completely reversed uh, during the US hours, and you will see a close below the open price. This tells me that bears are much stronger than bulls, okay? And that's why price action at the end of the day is the most important price. So I will pay a very, very close attention before I'm pulling the trigger uh, to a daily close price. So. This was a nice example of, of a break to the downside out of this channel. And you can see that market then uh, in the next few days nicely continued to the downside in impulsive fashion. Okay. This was wave one, wave two, an extended wave three, wave four pulled back, back towards the wave four of a one lesser degree and then even lower levels. Now, it's also good to know that when you see this trend line broken, okay, the, which usually confirms a wave free in progress, then this trend line will typically react as a resistance in upcoming fourth waves. It happened here. It happened also here. Okay, we had a spike and you can see market always reversed from it. Okay, so any questions for this slide maybe? Just a second. Okay, so any questions here maybe? If wave A is in three waves and wave C is in five waves, what we call the structure? It's a flat. Okay. We have a regular flat, flat, expanded flat, and running flat. So I can see five waves in wave one here. Uh, actually, I don't know which chart exactly are you looking at. If you are talking about crude oil, Ross, uh, then maybe um, you should go to lower time frames. Okay, sometimes uh, not all sub waves are visible in just one time frames. Markets are fractal. Okay, uh, so let's continue to next slide. Actually, now. Uh, I will present you my trading examples, strategies that I shared with our members in April, okay? Um, and here we have example of Euro dollar. Now, uh, as you know, Euro dollar has been an uptrend for whole year till now. And um, obviously I was still looking for continuation to the upside now, especially if we focus on this four hour uh, wave structure, then you can actually see that market here made three waves to the downside. And this wave C was quite extended. So at that time, I 
was looking for potential bear scenario scenarios with wave free in progress. But then a few days later, we have seen very uh, st uh, sp very strong spike to the upside. More importantly, we have seen an overlap with this wave A. So at this stage, with this overlap, I knew that this decline should unfold in a corrective manner. I knew that this should be only a temporary pause within ongoing uptrend. Okay. So a few days later, I was looking for this ABC X ABC pattern. Okay. It's a call, a double zigzag. So I also identified my levels from where. I want to see a reversal before I will pulling a trigger. Okay. So I was ready to go long on this market, but it was still too early. Okay. Now here was an ABC. Here we had wave X. So if I'm looking for a zigzag, then we still need wave A, B, and wave C to the downside. Okay. I was looking for completed, um, potentially completed uh, corrective movement around 61.8%, which is actually taken from the first uh, zigzag measured from a wave X. And more importantly, I wanted to see that wave C will stay above this lower trend line, which is parallel trend line compared to this upper trend line. Okay. So I wanted to see a bounce from around 1.370. And if I would see an impulsive bounce to the upside, only then I will be looking for longs um, as long as the market would be trading above this, uh, my support levels, okay, that I identified. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, now here, you can see that a few days later, market bounce from 13670, we have seen here a new low and then strong reversal to the upside. More importantly, we have seen uh, some broken trend lines here. And also, this is clearly a very strong move. When you see this, such a strong reaction to the upside, you can be sure that this is an impulse, especially if, uh, and part of a larger uptrend, especially when previous swing highs were broken, okay? So here, as you can see, swing high was still in place, swing high in place, swing high in place, swing high in place, okay? And when this wave B swing high was broken, after a new law was established, I knew that something is changing. So this wave B swing high was broken. Even we have seen push above wave X. And I already were looking uh, for longs when the market moved ab uh, above this wave B. So I put the longs uh, here in and put the stops below the lows. Okay. And then uh, I aggressively trading uh, were trailing stops to the upside. And if I remember correctly, I was uh, got out of this trade around break even. But then a few days later, we identified this ABC retracement and we again got involved actually already here because I was very confident that this market uh, is already found the lows here and we were looking for longs here. Uh, and put a stop loss above seven, just beneath 78.6%. We, we didn't put a stop loss below the lows because still when it comes to trading, um, you need to keep in mind risk reward ratio. And a few days later, we have obviously seen a move to a new highs. Okay, so more importantly, my minimum expectations because I was looking for a corrective reversal was move to the upside, okay, which means that this whole uh, pullback should be fully retraced, okay, and this obviously happened, and then market, as you can see, is now reversing to the downside, okay. So uh, that's for euro dollar. Once again, uh, wait, identify your levels, wait on a confirming price action, which in our case was impulse to the upside, okay, and only then pull a trigger. Uh, now let's look on dollar yen. Um, this was also uh, from what two months back. Uh, we identified here five waves of decline. Here is overlap, which is fine because this is a leading diagonal that can occur in wave A or wave one. So this was wave one, two, three, four, five. And obviously, I was just looking for a temporary corrective rally. I identified here wave A, triangle for wave B and wave C. Okay. And here, I was quite confident this is a corrective rally. Why? Because uh, 
let's say that you would assume that here is a wave too low and then you see sharp move to the upside but market goes back to these levels so obviously i knew that something else more complex is going on and i labeled this wave b triangle and uh, we're looking for a final move to the upside wave c that should st stop around 161.8 uh, and around 78.6 percent retracement okay so again i was preparing myself for shorts by but at this price like shown on the chart 103.82 I still didn't didn't pull a trigger here, okay? I wanted to see that market will confirm my wave count. I wanted to see our reaction from those levels. I need an impulse down because only impulse can confirm um, a change in trend. In our case, a completed free wave rise and change from bullish to bearish mode, okay? So next uh, day or two days later, Market reversed strongly to the downside. It was after non-farm payroll supporting uh, the start of April. Um, then you can see that this decline clearly is very strong. So because I have seen a reversal for my, my levels, because this was a triangle in wave B, which means it cannot be labeled as a wave two because triangles never occur in wave two. Then I was quite confident this market should continue lower. So I got in at the market i think it was on monday um on monday morning and put stops above this invalid short-term invalidation level and a few days later market fell very strongly uh, towards this trend line and we got out at this support line when the market bounced okay so again very nice example how to identify the wave count identify reversal zone more importantly, wait on a confirming price section and then pull a trigger, okay? So um, this was dollar yen. Uh, here's another nice example of cable. Again, very deep pullback, but very ugly price action. You can see very tight ranges here, uh, a lot of overlaps. So I was looking for a zigzag. Uh, for a double zigzag story. Uh, so double zigzag that occurred in the middle of a larger trend. I was looking for move to a new high, but from a trading perspective, I was uh, for me it would just be enough to see impulse to the upside, and then I will be looking to catch a third leg higher. Okay, this one. So um, I was identifying levels. Uh, here we have this channel. Uh, I was looking for some FIP levels here, and more importantly, I wanted to see a bounce from that levels so around 1640, maybe 16380. It actually it's not important. I just need to see an impulsive reaction to the upside back close to this wave B. So a few days later, market turned sharply to the upside. More importantly, we have seen a breakout point here. Uh, also, we have seen a push above wave B, so any bearish interpretations like wave 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be invalidated. So um, I was looking for a low in place here. We also waited on a uh, corrective retracement. Nothing moves in straight line. So, so sometimes I wait on a corrections, on a corrective pullbacks to join the trend from better levels. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes because I don't, I also miss the move, but um, that's how trading is. So in that case, I was waiting for a pullback. We have seen a pullback nicely into 15, 61.8% retracement area back towards these previous swing lows from where we have seen a very strong reaction to the upside and even a few days later market moved to a new high, um, if not a few weeks. Um, here we were looking for longs for 15, 61.8% and stops were placed at the lows here. Okay, very simple trade plan. So identify the wave count, confirm, uh, wait on confirming price action. And obviously you need to have your trade plan in your head a uh, few days before this actually happens. Okay, uh, so uh, it's very important especially for me that I uh, keep eyes on the market uh, regularly, okay? Otherwise, I need a few days to get back in. So uh, that's for cable. 
uh, gold. Uh, now here on gold, uh, you can see on a daily chart, very strong move to the downside. Okay, so obviously to me, this was enough data that this is an impulse. So I wanted to go involved uh, on the short side of this market after the pullback. So I was focusing on this rally here and we identified it on this four hour chart as an ABC X ABC, another double zigzag. Um, also identified levels around 50 and 61.8% compared to this decline. Okay, it was around here. Also, uh, here you can see that uh, wave one on the left, it's actually it's not shown, was extended, okay? And usually when you have a wave one extended, you will see that correction of a larger degree will not retrace towards wave four, but most likely into the region of a wave two, okay? So this was our extended wave one. This was our wave two pullback. So I was looking for a retracement back to the region of a wave two and not wave four, because wave one was extended at not wave three. Very, very important wide line. Okay, so I was looking for a retracement back to 15, 6, 1.8% that came out to, um, around these wave two levels. And at this stage, actually, we already took short here. Okay, and we're looking for a stops. Uh, above this wave two, around 13.65, if I remember correctly. And <clears throat> I was quite confident this market will reverse to the downside, firstly, because we had five waves down. Secondly, because this was uh, overlapping price action to the upside, which confirms um, the corrective labeling. So I was looking for a reversal to the downside. And a few days later, we have seen a very strong move to the downside into a new swing low. You can see here 12.68 and here was 12.77. So actually this whole move has been uh, erased, okay? Uh, <clears throat> so actually we're ex another very nice example. Now uh, I got in this trade a little bit early, but even if you would wait on a confirming price action a little bit more and wait on this breakout, even here, you would not miss nothing. Actually, it would be even better risk reward uh, trade because in that case, you could put stops above these highs, okay? Uh, okay, so any questions? So I feel it, not sure actually what to mean. <clears throat> What is higher high and lower low? <laughs> Actually, I suggest you to Google this. You should know this, okay? Uh, this is actually, you have higher low here, okay? Higher swing low. This was low of a pullback. This was low of a pullback. Okay, and this is, these tops are higher highs, okay? So as long as you have, higher swing lows in place, it means that market is in bullish trend. If you have like here uh, lower swing highs, uh, then you know that market is in bearish trend. Okay, uh, now let's take a look on the next example, uh, crude oil. Uh, on crude oil daily chart, we identified a reversal here from where market fell in five waves. Wave one, two, three, four, five. So here was a very deep pullback, but more importantly, uh, it was in three waves. I can label it as a ABC move, and market, as you can see, also did not move into a new high. So I was expecting a continuation to the downside. Okay, so I identified the wave count again. Always when I before I um, go into trading, we will firstly take a look on the weekly, daily chart. And maybe the only daily chart weekly is not too, even so important to me. But uh, when I will see something interesting, then I will go to lower time frames, not before. Okay. And then I will go to lower time frames to see if we have a clear wave pattern or sub waves that I need in place and that could lead to a trading plan. So I was looking for a five waves of decline and I identified a big three wave retracement 
this was an ABC move. It was a running triangle in wave B. Uh, so actually, you can see here that I, again, I was waiting for a confirming price action because this move was quite strong to the upside. Definitely, you could label this uh, differently, like wave one, wave two, and extended wave three in progress. So again, I waited on a confirming price action. And when we have seen this reversal back towards this trend line, okay, uh, support line, I was quite confident that this market is heading to the downside. So uh, I was, uh, we pulled a trigger at this stage around 101, 60 or 50. Okay, and we're looking for a, retrace, a retracement all the way back to 96. 40 this obviously did not happen till today but still it was enough of room for to make some money on the downside so actually we, we have seen a retracement back beneath this uh wave b swing lows okay and uh you can actually see that this count has been confirmed when the market if you remember those channels that i was talking about at the start this market started to accelerate to the downside when this lower trend line, par parallel trend line of this uh, channel has been taken away. Okay, when this breakout occurred, I was even more confident that market is now heading to the downside in impulsive fashion. Okay, because this on the left, you can see that was very strong and extended move with a daily close price around these levels. Okay, so we took a trade here uh, on the, a little bit early before breakout actually occurred, but uh, our trailing stop uh, has been reached on this pullback around just above uh, $100 per barrel. But still, uh, it's not an excellent trade, but still very uh, solid trade. Okay, it's important that you make money. So, um, okay, so once again, key points for a setup, for a trading setup, from my perspective. Firstly, you always need to identify a trend, okay? So like uh, here uh, on gold, identify a trend. We, I identified a trend, a strong reversal. Then focus, uh, not end, uh, focus on clear wave pattern, okay? Uh, zigzag within ongoing trend, double zigzag. It's important that you label the wave structure that fits your uh, direction, okay? But wide lines must match with uh, your anticipations so if you're looking uh, like here if you are looking for a double zigzag then you need to see some overlaps okay and um, only then when you have uh, when you identified a trend when you identified uh, the wave labeling on the lower time frame charts when you identified uh, FIP levels you can wait on your confirming uh, price action. Okay, so you need to see your confirming price action for uh, a reversal from your zones that you identified with your FIP levels. Okay, and when you see a reversal zone, uh, when you have a, that confirming price action, uh, then let the market breathe, take a uh, take a trade, take an action. You know where to put the stop loss. Very simple. Wait on a confirming price action and you will exactly know where to put the stop loss. And I personally, if I see at the end of the US session, very some strong reaction that I anticipated, which is very interesting for my trading, uh, I will wait, still wait on a daily close price and will usually uh, pull a trigger on the European, uh, at the European Open, okay, on the next day. So for me, close price, it's actually a lot. Okay, it has uh, the same weight like the wave count actually. Uh, so actually, uh, Ahmed, you will be able to see record book. So uh, you will be able to review this once more time in the future, okay? Uh, so traders, any questions re regarding um, theory? that we just went through. Uh, if not, then we will take a look at current market conditions, what is going on, uh, what is interesting for the short-term traders maybe. Um, 
can you take a look at, at gold? Of course we can. Uh, fam, um, I think I know you. <laughs> I think I already saw you. So, of course, let's take a look on gold. Um, just wait for my charts to load here. Uh, so, on gold, 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 um, on gold daily chart, I'm tracking big triangle here for a while. Actually, I was looking and presented to our uh, subscribers this triangle idea when the market was fading here back uh, around the same levels, actually, back in February. So, we were looking for a sideways price action. So, from a uh, long perspective, it's still not very interesting for any strong move to the downside but for short-term traders it can be interesting because i identified here a triangle which i think it's a wave b uh, it's part of a wave d now keep in mind that each leg in a triangle should be structured in a corrective manner so like here it was a free wave move for a wave a w zigzag for a wave b free wave rally with extended wave c for wave c then first leg down only and then a sideways price section. When you have such a strong move to the downside, and then you have a period of consolidation like this, then you can be uh, sure that this is a correction with an ongoing weakness, okay? So market just slow down here, it's just breathing, but sooner or later, uh, the larger trend should resume, which is to the downside. So I'm looking for a break to wave C. Uh, I'm looking actually already possibly for a completed triangle here uh, in wave B. Uh, we have wave A, wave B, C, D, E. Uh, this wave E already can be counted in five, uh, sorry, not in five, in three legs. And this 13, 15 short term critical level stayed in place. And for now, we can see some lower swing highs actually. Okay, you can see that this was one swing high. This was second swing high. We have already a new swing low here. So it looks like the market wants to go lower, but uh, from a confirmation point of view, we need a decisive break of this lower trend line because triangles can be sometimes very tricky, can become very complex. Uh, so you can actually see maybe even more uh, longer or more complex wave E, even a wave E can be itself a triangle. So keep an eye on 1277. This should be a confirmation breakout point that will lead to lower prices on crude oil. Uh, sorry, not on crude oil, on gold. Uh, so uh, here, if you are that kind of trader, then definitely you should see and wait on a daily close price below to this wave B to confirm end of a wave B triangle. Okay. Um, so I'm definitely looking lower on, on gold towards this, my FIP levels uh, here around uh, 1220, maybe 1240. Uh, so these are my levels that I'm watching for a move to the downside, okay? Um, <clears throat> so that's for gold. Uh, someone asked also for dollar yen. No, I'm looking down on dollar yen. I'm also bearish on uh, on S and P uh, for the short term. So here on dollar yen, actually you can see a very uh, big head and shoulders here. This can be left shoulder. This can be left shoulder, head, right shoulder, neckline maybe already broken. Uh, so definitely I'm looking for continuation to the downside on dollar yen. And here I have some levels on the downside. Actually, I'm looking for a break to in, into wave C or either way free. It's not important, okay? For the short term swings, it's uh, for me just important that we go beneath 100.72. So these are uh, my minimum expectations, but looking for a drop towards these uh, Fibonacci levels that identify them just beneath 100. Okay, so I'm looking for further weakness on dollar yen and the actually the S&P 500 uh, is the reason why I'm looking to the downside. If we take a look on the S&P real quick, as you know, uh, yen crosses are highly correlated with uh, S&P 500. And I will also show you some chart in a second. Now, 
here on the s and I'm actually looking for a potential idea of a, um, observing idea of a flat correction here in a wave four. This can be counted in three legs down for a wave A, three waves down for uh, three waves up for a wave B. In fact, in the middle of this wave B, you can see a triangle. Okay, so you know that this cannot be labeled as wave two. So this was a triangle in wave B. Then you know that wave C was final part of this recovery from here that has unfolded in three legs. So if this was a free wave move, then we know that this move should uh, belong to some larger pattern. So I'm actually looking to the downside for a wave C. Uh, my minimum expectation is a drop beneath this 1858 level. Also this trend line connected from 1800 has been broken, which is now uh, testing it as a resistance at the current market price. So ideally we will see a reversal to the downside as long as the market is trading beneath 900, okay? So uh, here's also a very interesting overlay chart. Uh, uh, actually, it's just a second. Uh, actually, it's here in black. We have the uh, mini S&P 500. Uh, I think it's a June contract. And here in uh, these colors, we have uh, Yang crosses, ASEAN, CADIAN, UEN. And notice that correlation here, uh, back from last week, uh, was the same markets. Uh, Yang crosses moved to the downside while the S&P was falling. And now the S&P is recovering in black, as you can see. But here, Yang crosses are still looking very weak, okay, are at the lows. So uh, what will happen if the S&P will really reverse from that trend line of resistance that I sh just showed? Well, probably Yang crosses will accelerate even more to the downside. Okay, so uh, I'm looking for more uh, weakness on Yang crosses and which confirms the fact that dollar yen should also move to the downside. Okay, so um, traders, uh, I would continue here with a lot of charts, yeah, but uh, unfortunately, uh, webinar time is already gone. So uh, I will have to thank you for participating in our webinars and uh, especially for the Wafix Street, where we have uh, also special offer for FX Street uh, visitors. We have lower prices for our services. If you're interested, please uh, check our services there. I will post the link here. Okay, you can see link here. So uh, actually, just a second, all attendees. So you can check our services, what we have to offer. We have uh, daily chart, four hour charts, intraday charts, also intraday uh, sections. We have video analysis also. Uh, we do um, webinars for members. So uh, worry a lot of a lot of things here. So if you're interested, please visit our services uh, description and hope to see you there. OK, if not, we have uh, obviously always our free newsletters. So there can be something uh, interesting for you. So traders, once again, thank you very much for attending and hope to see you in our new webinar next time. Have a good day all, bye.